In this short lecture, we're going to talk about understanding variables and their data types. So, remember you learned about variables in algebra. Well, what is a variable? Basically, a variable is a named place in the computer's memory that holds a value. The user who's going to actually be running the program or the programmer that's actually coding can supply the value of that variable. Um, for example, you can name variables something like int grade, x, i, j, or other things. All right, before we can use a variable in Visual Basic, we have to declare it. Um, this tells the computer and the compiler that we're going to name this variable and we're going to use it so it creates that space in memory. And we tell it what data type it is. The data type tells the computer what type of value to expect in that variable. So when it creates that space in memory, it knows what um, type of space it is. Um, if we actually enter in a data type and then we put in a different um, value, then we can get errors in our code and in our compilation. So these are the main different data types. There are others. Um, however, these are the main ones that we'll use. The first one is an integer. An integer represents a whole number, positive or negative. It takes up four bytes of storage. A float is for a floating point number. Uh, it takes up four bytes of storage. It goes approximately seven digits. So if you need something longer than that that has decimal places, you'll want to use a double, which is the next one, and it takes up eight bytes of storage. Note that it uses 15 digits. So floats and doubles will take care of values that have decimal places. The next data type is a decimal. The thing with a decimal is it's typically used for currency. Um, it only has 15 digits. However, note that it does take up double the storage space um, that a double does. It takes up 16 bytes. So typically, we don't want to use the decimal. Character is anything from negative 128 to 127, and that's in Unicode. A character for us is typically, typically going to be a single letter, number, or symbol that we want to use. The next data type is a Boolean. A Boolean represents true or false, on or off. It only takes up one byte because it's stored as a T or an F. So when we want to look at, is something valid? Yes or no. Are you hungry? Yes or no. Any type of variable that's going to simply represent a true or false, yes or no, we want to use a Boolean. A string is used in Visual Basic as if it was a data type. We declare it the same way we do the other data types. However, the, all the other data types are what's known as a primitive data type. The primitive data type is already uh, part of the compiler in every dis distant, uh, different system, um, whether you're talking you know, Visual Basic or C Sharp or C++ or Java. Um, however, a string is actually a class. So we're actually creating a class object when we declare a string. Um, however, Visual Basic is overloaded to allow us to do that. Um, the storage depends upon how large the, the string is um, because a string is basically just a list of characters. And because of that, the value range can go up to 2 billion Unicode characters. Now, how do we actually assign a variable? When we assign a variable, we are always going to use the keyword dim. That tells the compiler the compiler to actually create that space in memory. You're going to give your variable um, a descriptive name, and then you're going to type as, which is another keyword, and then you're going to tell it what the data type is. For example, dim int number as integer. This tells it to create it. This is the name that was given to it. As integer tells it the data type. Now, Variables, again, should always have a descriptive name that describes whatever the purpose of that variable is, as well as the data type. 
For example, uh, int grade, string name, decimal tax rate, DBL, total sales. Um, make sure that you do not capitalize the data type. Use all lower prefix number uh, letters and only capitalize the first letter of each subsequent word or part of a word um, as in the examples below string last name and int std num. Variable names cannot start with numbers or have spaces in them. You'll get a wavy blue line and that will tell you that you have broken syntax. Now the common data types have prefixes just like our controls do. So for integer it's int and again that was for whole numbers so say I'm declaring a um, a year, I might say int year equals 2011. Strings, again, anything with names or anything that has more than one letter or uh, something that is not going to be used for computation if it's numeric, like an ID number can be declared as a string and its prefix is str. A float, remember that was a small number with decimals and if it, it is flt for the prefix. Double is DBL, and that's larger number, numbers with decimals. Decimal, which is DEC, again, is typically used for currency, takes up twice the space of the double data type, so we typically do not want to use decimal. Character is a single letter, number, or symbol, so typically um, that's what's going to go into a character, uh, such as your initial, uh, a letter grade, um, anything that's just going to represent one thing and its prefix is chr boolean prefix is bln and again that's going to be a variable that is going to have a one uh, or zero true or false yes or no type of answer now all of these prefixes that we've been learning are called hungarian notation um, and those are the prefixes that we used to properly name our variables uh, in both Visual Basic as well as other programming languages. Now, after we declare the variable, we need to give it a value. Uh, in order to give it a value, we're going to use what's called the assignment operator. The assignment operator is this equal sign. So we can do that in a couple of ways. We can declare the variable first and then initialize it on the same line, or we can do it on two separate lines. So this is dim int number as integer equals zero, dim str name as string equals quote quote. Uh, you could also say in that instance equals nothing and type out nothing. It'll turn blue. It's a keyword. Or you could have done them on two separate lines, such as dim int number as integer, and then int number equals zero. Now variables can be assigned values like numbers or strings. Um, or they can be assigned from input, such as a text box. I recommend that you initialize, which means giving a value to all of your variables when you first declare them. Also remember that when you're, when you're putting in the information, such as int number equals zero, um, you cannot do this backwards. You cannot say zero equals int number. The information always flows from the right side to the left side. So it's always going to be variable equals value when you're assigning values. Now, when you're assigning either a string or a character value, you're going to do that within double quotation marks, such as string name equals Alex. I have double quotation marks on either side. CHR letter grade equals A. Again, the double quotation marks um, on either side. Make sure that you do not enclose numbers of any sort, any, any type of numeric value in quotation marks, otherwise it will be read as a string. Um, only those numeric data types can be used in calculations. So if you do put the quotation marks around them, it turns it into a string and you cannot use it in a calculation. Now. Strings can be combined from a couple of different sources. This is called concatenation. Um, concatenation simply means that we are going to be merging um, either strings or strings and variables together into another string or into the text property of an object. 
all you're going to do to concatenate is to use this ampersand, which is shift 7, uh, the and symbol, in between each segment. So in this example, I have string data, which is a string variable that's assumingly already declared, equals, there's the assignment operator, this is some data, and remember that's in quotation marks, ampersand, int num, ampersand, and this is a number. So that ampersand is going to join those strings and that integer. That integer, will, uh, whatever that int num value is, will be put into that string, and all of that becomes one string that's going to go into the variable str data. You can do the same thing with a label, such as saying label whatever you called it, dot text equals quotation, this is some data, space close quote, ampersand, int num, ampersand, quotation, and this is a number, close quote.